The Premier League season is around the corner. This summer has seen many world-class players join teams all across England. The competition this season will be fierce as some teams have reinforced to battle their way to a title, while others have reinforced to stay out of relegation. And today we will be doing our official Premier League season predictions. But before we get into it, we have a special announcement for you all. Attention all box to box supporters. If you want to see our predictions for Serie A, Bundesliga, La Liga and Liga, we have a major announcement for you. We are thrilled to announce the launch of the official box to box Patreon page with our first video being our top 5 leagues predictions. This Barcelona. Is You're getting into either Barcelona. What? Yeah. what? Are you yeah. stupid? He was on He's the it. field and he ran around like yeah. What was my doing? What was my doing? I scream, I sing to the fans yeah. once in a while. Yeah, and Barcola, Allez les bleus, Allez les bleus, Allez les bleus, Running down the wing, who cares? With three exclusive tiers, you can support the channel any way you see fit. We will reward our patrons with an additional YouTube video, a group chat with Varvar, Pala, Firms, and Millie, a weekly Q&A session to go over all your top questions, and just by supporting, you will have your name at the end of our YouTube videos. So no matter how you support, you will always be a valued member. And if you're one of the first 50 patrons, you'll have all the perks of the top tier at the lowest price. So we can't wait to see you on our Patreon. Yes, we're launching a Patreon. And if you're wondering what Patreon exclusive YouTube video is gonna be on there, it's gonna be our other top five leagues prediction. So Bundesliga, League R, Serie A, and La Liga are gonna be on there. Millie, for this Premier League video though, how's this gonna work? So no feet picks? No, no feet picks, sadly. Millie, Millie please. What the <laughs> is happening? Huh? <laughs> For this Premier League prediction, we're going to go randomly team by team and see where the boys put them on their predictions list. The first team up, though, is West Ham. Let's see what they're about. Scraping into the top 10 last season, West Ham looked to improve with key signings like Somerville and Kilman. But could this be enough to get another top 10 finish? Realistically, I could see them go lower mid-table or higher mid-table, to be honest. It's really a hit or miss, bro. I like the players, the group of players that they've assembled. I like it. Where like they got? The manager, Kilman? the manager that they just sacked mm. Moyes for, I do not rate. Lopetegui, I do not rate. I have them personally ninth. That's what I ninth? have. Ooh. That's not crazy, but saying lower mid-table is a possibility for West Ham, I think is crazy. I, I think they could have the potential if all things go right you could end up in a Europa League spot for West Ham but you I think I think like a, an addition like full Krug is is the firepower you need to let's say be that top mid table listen I don't know how it'll work with the change of styles because Moises had a very massive distinct one, change of styles but he's got backing bro they, they bought Kilman for 40 mil they have a couple of transfers On coming a in seven year contract got one of those crazy Todd Bailey contract. That, that's a Chelsea contract if <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen one <laughs> I just I I put them I put them eighth place but I'm hesitant because Lopetegui can play some like pragmatic football. And when you have guys with Kudus on your team, that's not the direction I thought West Ham should be. Yeah, but Moyes, he, Kudus played well under Moyes, which is a pragmatic coach also. I don't think it's that that's crazy. True. I got them ninth as well. Not, if it's I, the ideology. That's crazy because I have them ninth as well. I think there's a, a number of teams that will do better than them. I'm not saying West Ham's the worst team in the world, but they're, they're not really competing for a European spot, in my opinion. Like. Let's say they have a good run of form, then maybe you could see them kind of getting there. But I think ninth is a sweet spot for them. I'm okay with ninth here. Even young signings like Somerville. The guy was a baller at Leeds a couple oh, of years ago. Baller, yeah. baller, baller. We'll like see certified. how that goes. Yep. Looks like the boys have West Ham just getting into the top 10 in the Premier League. Let's see the next team up. It is Brighton. The loss of Deserbi is a big one. However, Brighton have shown that they are able to find diamonds in the rough. Will they be able to do it again this season? Brighton are an interesting case because they've had a good run in the last, how long would you say? Last four seasons or so? A couple five of years, seasons. yes. It, that Deser Deserbi era. That's what True, but he started the era. But I feel like the ideology at the club is the, is that's the best part. Forget Deserbi. Uh, they're bringing in a second division Bundesliga manager. And what's his name? Hurtzler? Respect. Respect. St. Pauli manager, I'm pretty St. Pauli sure. manager. Well, he won Bundesliga too with them. That's He's the youngest, youngest manager in Premier League history. 31, I think. If the brother does not play FM24, I don't know what he's doing, because that's that's like exactly the prototypical yeah. type of guy. Stop beating around the bush. Where do you have them? Uh, I have them 10th place. Oh, you rate I the guy that's then. that's high. You I think, think that's, that's very high? high? I have them 14th. You have them 14th? I got them 13th. I have them 13th as well. I, this is a 
uh, regression year, in my opinion, for Brighton. Too much has changed with that squad from when they were battling for like fifth or sixth place a couple years ago. It's they just don't have the same pedigree of players that they once had a couple seasons ago. And the loss of Dezerbi, I think, is one of the biggest losses you could have as a club. That entire back room got stripped by Chelsea. Like it's not, you're not talking about the same Brighton that was competing for those Europeans. But spots. that happened last summer too. And we and said, they got they got I think Brighton got worse last season. Oh, like, definitely. Who's, significantly who's worse. Who's the signings this season? There's only Minte. Weefer. Weefer. That, that guy's Bayern. decent though. Yeah, he's all right. Weefer, that's a that's a 30 million euro transfer. He's he's good. He's but, good. But, but after you you lose players over the last two seasons, like a McAllister, a Caicedo, uh, those are players that are huge to the culture of a club. And bringing in those types of players is not, unfortunately, enough. Like we were talking about West Ham in ninth place, eighth place. That's that level that, oh, they have Kudus, they have Paqueta, they have Suchek, they have Edson Alvarez. Like those are players that you'd probably look at Brighton and say those are some of their People best players. People fail to remember, Mitoma was injured for a good portion of last season. Mitoma got figured out, bro. <laughs> they, they figured out his they, thesis. They, read they, his, they, read they his thesis. ended up reading his thesis so they know his moves. Unfortunately, Brighton fans, this isn't going to be the same team that you've been watching for the last two or three seasons. The next team up, though, is Nottingham Forest. Doing enough to survive the drop last season, Nottingham Forest will need great results to prove that they deserve to be in the Premier League. Interesting, interesting, interesting team. In my Th there's you nothing find, interesting. I, don't, I find there's nothing interesting. There's a nothing lot of interesting things in that sentence, but why? Bar, bar. They have a reliable Premier League manager. Nuno Espirito Santo has proven to be a reliable Premier League has manager. Has he? Guy's doing Somehow the brother finds jobs in the Premier League. I have no idea why. Well, he was decent at Wolves. He got no, a bad stint in Saudi. He was not decent at Wolves. Yes, he, he, was, he got sacked at Saudi, no? Yeah, but still. Yeah. Uh, who he was, but I'm pretty sure he was coaching uh, Benzema, and everyone who takes that job gets sacked. I'm pretty sure at this point. <laughs> but uh, they have obviously some money laundering schemes going on Bro, behind the scenes. Elliot Anderson for forty something million. Who I is the, the brother? The brother might be young. He might be good. But come on. Okay, I agree. I have them. I have them getting relegated. I have them 18. Ooh. Oh my God. That's Me too, a little low. I'm not gonna lie. Even though I like Morgan Gibbs White, I think Morgan Gibbs White is mm. a world, not world class, but a very good pl Manchester United fan, by the way. <laughs> very good player. I think uh, it's not gonna be their season. First. Honestly, I see Nottingham Forest just scraping through, staying in the Premier League. I have them 16. 16th. That's million. not great. That's thriving. I don't think that's that. No, that's because those thriving, points are bro. so close. It, usually the drop off in points is like like 18th to 20, where it's like a really heavy drop off in points. But from 17 to maybe uh, 15 or 16, it's very, very close usually. They have some decent yeah. players though. Murillo, if if Murillo, and I know he's been linked to a transfer to Chelsea and some, some around there. If Murillo's that center back, Brazilian, he's very good. Morgan Gibbs White, very good, but it's just those support players for me are not that level. It's very shallow. I got them at 19. Purely because I think this season there's a lot of competition amongst the, the, the relegation teams. 15 and past, there's a lot of competition. And if people don't get point deductions, then it's gonna be a very uh, it's gonna be a very tight end of the season. I agree. Nottingham Forest, unfortunately, the boys have you in relegation. I have you scraping through though. The next team up is a big one. It is Liverpool. In Klopp's final season with Liverpool, they earned a third place finish and a CL spot. But with Arne Slot at the helm, will their first season with a new coach be enough or will the absence of Klopp be too much? Boys, let's sum up Liverpool summer in a couple sentences. Turkey. You don't actually, you might Turkey. only need one. Turkey? Turkey, yeah. Why? Turkey. Because Mo Salah took a trip to Turkey. Oh. The biggest transfer That's probably this the season. biggest. Yeah. His hair coming off his head was the biggest transfer <laughs> out this, this I don't. Summer. I don't even think you need a sentence. You have to make a noise. You have to go. <laughs> me, 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 me. Yeah. That's their whole transfer season. Or a honest lot. Honest lot. Na, 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 na. <laughs> That's uh, that's pretty much all that happened over at Liverpool, and and like we've said in the past, if you're not getting better, then you're getting worse in the Premier well, League because competition is fierce. Let's respect Arne Slot. Listen, preseason preseason doesn't matter usually, but oh boy. bro, Liverpool has been playing good. You can't say they haven't. Bro, that th this is crucial time for managers, especially a new manager coming into Liverpool. Preseason is the first time you're actually using the players the way you want and seeing what they're able to do. And they have done nothing. I really don't have a lot of confidence in Arne Slot. I, and I've said this before in the past. The Klopp hole that's left at Liverpool is going to be too big for a, a, a coach like Arne Slot. I really, like, it depends where you guys have them. I want to see where you Miller, guys you're have. almost convincing me to move my position. Uh, but I, I'm going to keep it. I think it's a relatively standard and conservative prediction. But I'm going to say fourth. 
fourth. For, yeah, for I, Liverpool, that's the, a little bit of a backdrop. Oh, definitely a backdrop, but that's the new standard after the Klopp era. I think they should be expecting fourth well, place. Can you give me an example of a legendary manager who had an insanely long stint at a club oh like Klopp, and I'm then he leaves, and then after that, like the club gets somewhat better or even equal to how they were performing? Well, none. Never. There's a lot of fixing that he has to do, and obviously that's going to take him back a couple of steps. Conte? No. Like... I'm, I'm, I have them sixth, personally. Well, maybe we'll sixth. see Juve. Maybe we'll see Juve. Allegri, there yeah. for I don't know how long. True. Digress. Yeah. In my True. opinion. Anyways, back to the Premier League. Yeah, but I think I think uh, Liverpool sixth. I. Oh. oh. So what? You're, is that well, what you guys are reacting now? I just I said it two crazy. seconds ago. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't I wasn't I didn't, listening to you. I didn't register. Bro, sixth. Yeah. Then forget six. That's not that crazy. But that means there's just five teams better than Liverpool. That means I know what kind of teams you're putting above Liverpool. A lot of teams have reinforced, bro. I don't think it's crazy. I got them fifth. I yeah. don't think it's Wait. that crazy because I, I have them making Champions League, scraping by. This is between fourth and fifth for me. I had them fourth. Thank you, Millie. I, I do have a bit of. I have enough confidence in the players that they have currently. It's not like Klopp let them let like left them in disarray. They still have very top quality players that were good at the Euros. That were, that were very and good. Copa America. It's just how much. It's more of a digression question for me. Like a Van Dyke, a Mo Salah, those players that were there for so long, but you know they're not going to be improving. Well, it's just difficult. It's time for Cody Gakpo to step up. It's time for Cody Gakpo. Yes, it's time for those Gakpo. players. You see, like, if you're relying on Gakpo, I think you're already cooked. Like, Bro, look at Arsenal, what look at Man City. What's wrong with Gakpo? You, the idea you have of Gakpo is not the player that Gakpo is. he world class? Is. He's a team of the season Euro player. Team of the season Euro player. He's a team of the season Euro player. in the Euros, you see Bro, the Bro, ninja at right back for Romania. Oh almost my God, again, the tournament. That, brother, Darwin been... Nunez was a, play, a player of the season in the uh, team of the tournament in Copa God. America. Bro, I'm sorry if you're relying on someone like Gakpo. The midfield, name me, who's going to be in the midfield? Sozobai, uh, McAllister, and Wells. Harvey Elliott? Endo. 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 Is that really Raven. a midfield for a it, Premier League? I think it's. I think it may be just enough to get Champions League, but I do think they'll get a European spot of some sort. I think uh, that's safe to say. I don't think whatever. Yeah, sure. Let's move on to the next team. <laughs> I guess we're just gonna have to see how Arne Slot does in his first season. The next team up though is Bournemouth. Let's see what they will be doing. The Cherries have made high-profile signings to show the league that they mean business. Where do you see this promising team finish? Is is Iraola the most underrated manager in the Prem? No. I think he is. I think he's world, not world class, but he's up there as one of the most underrated. He is the most underrated manager in the How Premier. did Bournemouth become a mainstay in the Premier League? That's and we're confidently putting them, I'm putting them 13th. So. I, I think it's because they weren't reaching with players. They just got players with quality that were able, that was just enough to get them past relegation. But then you just start build, putting the building blocks in there. Make sure you stay in the mid table. We've seen it before where teams, they have a couple seasons of middle, middle of the pack, they get their money, then they get their players and they improve a bit more. I think Bournemouth is on that path as well. They have the foundations to be very good, but I do have them around mid-table. Boys, where do you have them exactly? Uh, I have them 11th because Ooh, that's um, high. I, it is high, but I believe they will be keeping Solanke. There are some rumors of Solanke potentially leaving. If he does leave, my prediction probably goes a bit lower. But last year, Iraola started off the year terrible. I think they started off, uh, they were near the bottom after the first five, well, six, Solanke games. also was injured, if I'm not mistaken. But after that, Bournemouth were one of the top mid-table teams. Like they were, mm -hmm. they were really good for the rest of the year. I think that momentum is going to carry into the next season. I have them 11th. Varvar, I'm going to agree with you again. I don't know how this is happening. I have them 11th as well. I think the management Whoa. has been doing wonders with this. Is this is a situation where they end up being 16th and we lose. And our, when we review our Premier League predictions at the end of the season, the we look back and say, what were, were we? Points. This reminds me of a Derby Brighton situation. No. Where no. you don't know if, they, if they'll really break He's into He's at it the... again, Varvar. Yeah, no, this we'll is see, bro. Iraola is that good. This is hip. Yeah, I, I think that's very high praise for a manager that doesn't have that much of... Uh, CV, CV, really. Yeah. He's got a good CV. Rayo Vallecano legend, yes. by the way. I'm, respect him. Well, what a lift, always, lifter always, Rayo Vallecano stint. Bro. I'm always, I'm always going to respect Rayo Vallecano, but <laughs> unfortunately, this is the Premier League, so I think it's going to be a little tougher for him. But I do have them 12th. I think okay. it's in the same middle of the pack area that they'll cause problems for bigger teams, but they may drop points against smaller teams and closer to their level. So we'll see how they do. But up next is Newcastle a team that has high hopes, so let's see. 
After a mixed season in 23-24, Newcastle will look to improve on their seventh place finish. And with Tonali finally back, they may have the pieces to make a push. Where do the boys have them? This season, Newcastle is going to play no Champions League, and I think that's that's a huge benefit. That was a big part of why they kind of were disappointing last year. They got year, destroyed right? by injuries last year. Destroyed. Right. Like, Man United got destroyed, but Newcastle also, almost well, in that same yeah. tier, got destroyed by but injuries. Tonali's, this, Tonali's situation Tonali's didn't Tonali, help yeah. either. People don't even remember Tonali. I, I, to be honest, I completely forgot about yeah. Tonali coming back. So, I have them fourth. I actually think fourth. they're going to make what? Champions League. I love Newcastle's Stretch team. City. You I love love it's a good team, but I fourth. love Newcastle's team. Isaac, I think, is going to be a monster. Brother, they're I getting a point deduction. I love Anthony Gordon. No, they're not getting it's it. Coming, it's getting coming. It's coming. Anthony coming. Gordon, I think, very good. Tonali, Guimaraes. Bro, it's look a at very that team. Well they signed team. Lloyd Kelly for free, who's a solid Premier League player. They're, they're reloading, let's say. I think they were too overly stretched with a ton of competition last season. Plus the injuries, like you guys said, it's very difficult to stay competitive when half your team is either suspended or injured. I don't see them performing as well as that, but... I do, I do see the potential in it, honestly. Lewis Hall, Livermento, those are young players that are only gonna get better. And then you bring back Lewis Miley, who Lewis Miley, okay. He's been good. He's not Kobe Mainu, but he's still a good young midfielder, you know? So I think they're gonna do very good finish for it. And let's not forget, Isaac was injured for a lot of the season last that's season. True. And in my opinion, this is the top score of the Prem. Oh, mm. Firms, there's no, no that's way no. we make this, like, I'm, I'm making the same shout, brother. I, I want it to yeah. be a, I want it to be a little different because how like picking a player like Holland is a little too easy. You're looking at Isaac, what, 24 goals or so last season in the Premier League? Top three. Top three. And he, he did was not injured. score 24 yes, goals. Bro. In the People do not realize Who, how good Isaac? this guy was. He, Isaac yes. did not score 24 goals. Maybe he scored 24 goals last season, not in the Premier bro, League. It was Holland, Watkins, Isaac, I'm pretty sure. You could double check on that, but I. He, oh, we're, 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 we're he checking. scored 21. Oh, oh apologies. Well, 24, 21 off. is different. Okay, okay, but what is he top two? He's I, don't, I don't give a shit where he's he is. He's scored 21. Allen scored 28. So he might be season. second. I think Isaac is bringing in that form. Like, what? 24 years old now. He should be getting into his prime. I think this is a great shout for Premier League top score. But overall, Newcastle, I have them seventh. Seventh. <laughs> I have so them they're scoring all these goals, but they're finishing seven. But because you have to look at it at the end of the day, Barbara, the teams do not stay healthy the whole season. It, it happens to every single team. There's one or two teams that are outliers. They get very lucky. But Newcastle, we saw it last season. Those players, some of them are cardboard. It's very difficult to stay healthy. I'm saying, I'm agreeing with Millie. I'm saying Newcastle seventh. And I'm saying that because I think they can't take points off of the big teams. I, think, I, I, I think disagree. They can take points off all the mid-table and relegation teams, but they struggle versus the big dogs. Like I, 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 I could see them taking points off of, let's say, a Tottenham or a Chelsea, West Ham. We were Millie. We're talking about big clubs. <laughs> oh yes, of course. About like a Man City, but, Arsenal. But, but like a Man City, Arsenal, even Liverpool, arguably. They ain't like, touching them. It's they, very difficult. I agree. I, I'm gonna put them sixth. I think the inconsistencies are gonna drop them back a little bit, but they're a good team. So we have some mixed reviews about Newcastle. We'll see if they make the Champions League like Varvar says. But the next team up is Fulham. Firms, you're wearing the kit. Let's talk about them. Bringing in Emile Smith-Rowe shows that the club is determined to compete in the league. With options like Adama Traore and Raul Jimenez for Marco Silva, can they see a top 10 finish on the horizon? For now, as it stands, with Palinha being out, no replacement in sight, I'm picking 14. Listen, it's a very aging team. In my opinion, they don't have like the quality to compete. I think they're going to struggle in the relegation area, but ultimately they're going to end 17th. Oh, you're oh. just deciding. I, I I'm deciding that. I think 17th is way yeah, harsh. That's crazy. Yeah, that's that, crazy. Like, has, has the bones to be very good. Mind you, they even brought Sessegnon back. Uh, well, not back, but they brought him in from Tottenham. Sessegnon. I mean, that's, that's like a half-court heave. That's right? like yeah, that's but, way, way, but it's, one of those, it's one of those transfers that you put him with other quality players, the team overall will do a bit better. I don't. I think 17 is a bit of a stretch. I don't think they're touching relegation. That's like Shaq in the corner. No, come on now, bro. No, Shaq and Yo, you know how you know how long but, ago that brother was good. Yeah, but the thing is, is that I think Fulham is a right level for a player like that. I think this might be the new intro to the podcast. No. I don't think it's not that bad. With, of the, the, with the intro, with the coming back of Sesson, yo. It's not. It's not that bad of a shout. I don't think. I um, think that's his level. I have them 14. I have them 14. 12th. I actually like. What's going I on? I like. Bro? I like the team. Like yes, they sold Palinia, but I like who they've been linked to replace him with, and I think that. 
Fulham is one of those teams that it's no matter who Man City, Arsenal, or Southampton, Leicester, they're always going to play at a certain level. Yes. And they're always going to be a tough game. And uh, I was told I'm not allowed, but uh, I was going to say Smith Rowe, young player of the season, but I was told I'm not allowed. So. You Why think are you not allowed? He's 24 years old. Oh, 24, oh, okay. brother. It's time. He's just <laughs> getting up there. Those, <laughs> it's time, brother. The, the idea of Smith Rowe is, is like, oh, he's this 18-year-old, you know. Young like, star. Just... Start saving up that retirement fund, bro. Get that max, degree, bro. Max out your degree. Max out <laughs> yeah. your pension. We just put the fries in the bag, bro. The RSP <laughs> Yes, sir. This, yes, sir. That, bro. Just put the fries in the back. I used to play with soccer at Arsenal. That's crazy, bro. Just put the fries in the back. <laughs> oh man. All right. Next team, Brentford. Sesse yells like one of those threes, or the commentator goes, "Oh my God!" <laughs> bro, it's not that bad. I'm telling you. Did he just put the bare three where the commentator went, "Oh my God!" Oh my goodness. Bro, he has them 17. Oh my when God. I, when I'm saying Sessegnon's that level. Bro, that's, that's Aguero telling Vincent Company, don't shoot, don't shoot. Yeah. And he shot, and he scored. There are our predictions for Fulham. The next team up is Brentford. Let's see what we think about the bees. Now in their fourth straight Premier League campaign, Brentford will look to Ivan Tony once again to be one of the league's best. However, will they stay up for a fifth consecutive season? Brentford's, a, it's a little bit unfortunate because Ivan Tony might be here for one more season, yes, but that means he's leaving for free next time. Yeah. I know I we're talking about his this. replacement, Igor Silva, but he just, oh, unfortunately. Igor Silva. Well, he's not been a, a he's demon not, in the Belgium. I know, but he's not an Ivan Tony replacement. I agree. Scored a lot of goals, though. Scored a lot of goals, and he just got injured for four months. Oh, nice. I did not know that. And that is Lenny. Crazy you just and, got Lenny Ord. And, and even Tony, please don't gamble. And even Tony, you're here until you're on a free. <laughs> Unfortunately, but is is Tony enough for let's say a team like Brentford to maybe compete mid pack? Uh, I have Obama. them 16th. Personally, I don't see it that optimistic. I think it's I think it's gonna be a, a good enough team to beat relegation. Whatever we're agreeing on again, I got them 16th. The, these guys are okay. I have them at 15, so it's not that crazy. Damn, I have them a little higher than that. Oh, I think I think this is one of those like not necessarily a Cinderella team, but. Don't outside say it. outside of the top ten, I have them eleven. Oh, that's crazy! You making a crazy. comp, bro? I'm, you think I'm making a oh comp? Oh my like god! <laughs> watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Oh my god! <laughs> that's like me, full court heaving it, hitting a kid in the stand. Yeah, but we've seen Millie. We've seen Millie be right about these things before. Bro, this... Millie, Millie predicted the most I know, last season. I know, and he's the, he season. did stuff like this where he just randomly put a team like Brentford. Like, I don't think random, it's bro. Though. You just gotta feel. You just gotta have a feeling. For a team, I think Brentford Debo, they could pull. Millie's feeling yeah, up. Yeah, just confirmed. Millie's feeling up 23 men. <laughs> there was no, there was, there was no not, transition there. Was there no there was not even a connection. There was not nothing there, boss. Nothing there. Any dead space there? <laughs> Barbar, you gotta put that one back to the board, bro. You gotta go back to the drawing board with that one. That's a Sessignon type of. <laughs> God. Man. That's a Sessignon of jokes. <laughs> That's a Sessignon of jokes. <laughs> All right, I'm Mike. in my Celtic Shaq era. God damn. <laughs> in my Phoenix Suns Shaq era. <laughs> Brentford, let's see if you could pull off an 11th place. The boys don't believe you can. The next team up is Aston Villa. A lot of changes for the club. Unai Emery has done a fantastic job for Aston Villa. And with a new marquee signing in Amadou Onana, will it be enough to get a European spot? Very good team, very good project, but I see them suffering this kind of the same exact thing that Newcastle did this season. Mm -hmm. And with the increased workload in Champions League and all that, I have them eighth place. What? We're agreeing on the same things, Vavra. I got them eighth for the exact same reason. Bro, you guys are crazy. Bro, eighth place? You're think saying about me it. as if I'm saying like they're shit. They're not shit. No, this is not a shit team, but think about it. Champions League games, these guys, look, Unai Emery has experience in the Champions League, but the squad, we'll see if it's deep enough. You bro. guys are crazy. I'm gonna let Millie say his prediction because I want to see if all three of you are crazy, but... Uh, uh, eight, eight, I, that's a little too low for me. I put them sixth. I think they have enough quality to at least touch European football. If they have a good couple games, it's not it's not crazy to see them a fit at fifth place. I think a stretch is fourth, but fifth, I think fifth and sixth is their sweet spot for me. I, I think I think you will see good performances from Onana, but you're gonna you're gonna fall into that issue that last season 
I think was the peak of Ollie Watkins. Now, can you replicate his peak? That's I think that's did. his max potential. He's been doing it though. He's been doing it, but I don't think you're gonna get those second in the Premier League numbers. Bro, not only am I saying Ollie Watkins is gonna be the player of the season, I'm Player saying, of the season. What? I'm saying What's that, going on? Brother? I'm saying that Aston Villa is third in the Premier League. That's what? the craziest shout. That no, is that no. Sessegnon. You guys do shout. not realize what you guys just said. Aston Villa eighth place. Are you kidding me? Bro, third place. That means they're gonna do even better than they did last season yes. with more games. Yes, less because other depth. teams got worse. Bro, putting them eighth is saying that the teams like Chelsea, like Manchester United, Spurs. Like, is, is this like a top three where they're like competing for a second place? Bro, or is I this think like a. There's, there's gonna be like five teams competing for that third spot. But to say that they're eighth and like even six is egregious, eighth is outrageous. Ollie Watkins is only going up in his career, and I'm hearing shouts that he hit his peak last season. Bro, but, but how am I in a room with three other people that think this? I, I think three is. That is a shout. That is, if that happens, God bless, brother. <laughs> That's Bro, a God if you bless. want to set a line at five, and I'll bet anybody here that I think they're above five, if you think they're below five, I'll bet anybody here. Paula, I, that means you do not rate Douglas Louise. Because that departure, in my opinion, that's... I think, I think I'm doing it better than Douglas Louise. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying if Douglas Louise is still there, and you got to put in a line at five? So yeah. if they can finish higher than five, you know what? I'll buy an Aslani Aston Villa kit. And then if they finish lower, you have to buy the Aslani Aston Villa kit. We got money to spend here. Oh man, I didn't really okay. make money like that. Deal? Deal. That's crazy work over at Box to Box. And if you guys that. probably don't even know who Aslani is, he's an check intern. Check the podcast. Like, yeah. yeah, check the podcast. Check That's yeah. Only real ones know. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he hasn't even played for Aston Villa. Aston Villa, if you make the Champions League, you may need to fly Pala out for a CL game. The next team up, though, is Leicester. They are finally back in the Premier League. The former Premier League winners are now back in the top flight. But with Enzo Maresca gone, can they put it together to stay another season in the Premier League? Now, if this was a ranking on how nice their training ground was and how nice their stadium was, they would be very high. But this is, it's but, nice. But this is, yeah, yeah very nice. Oh. Crazy, so. but, um, Better than Milan. Oh, definitely and better than Juve. And Juve. Um, but their players are shit, so I put them 19th. Yeah, shit? I think, I think. Bro, they, they just ran away with a championship. You put them 19th. Yeah, they ran away with a championship, got their manager yoinked, got their best player yoinked. Um, I don't Bro, think it's looking it's too good. Maresca think... would not be able to play his style of football. That is a Burnley, Burnley situation. Maresca would not be able to play his attacking football in the Premier League. Pala, who's Leicester's manager? Steven Cooper. Steve Cooper. Steve, Steve Cooper. Steve, Steve, Steve Cooper. Same name. I, I just. This is a situation where a team goes up and comes straight back down, brother. This is a 19th. I don't think they even try to stay up. I God. rate this team. They have, a, from every, anybody coming up, they actually have a core of players that know that played the, in the Prem. That know the Bro, Prem. Bro, Wood Faze, uh, he's been a Premier League player and he's a good defender. And he was ass kick. No, boy. he was, bro. He was ass. Bro, he was one of the worst Premier League players I've ever watched in my life. Because you watched him with a high line and he's running around the pitch alone. Okay, Bro. who's next? Go next. What do you mean, who's Connor next? Connor Cody. I mean, all right, he's pretty ass also. Keep going. Uh, the, the team is not great. They need some reinforcements, but this is a Premier League experienced team. Mm -hmm. And uh, you add a couple additions. I don't know what experience you're talking about, brother. This they, bro, they've Vardy, experienced Vardy being ass. Yeah. Bro, Jamie Vardy? Are we really bringing up a 30? This guy, this that's guy. That's experience, though. Bro, that's Celtic Shaq as a person. Like, that's How many goals do you think Celtic he's going to score in the Premier League? Five? No. Four? Maybe 10? How much? 10? Uh, brother, if I, you're the. If oh, you're the, okay, you okay, check okay. his age! Brother, if he's the only option, of course, if they score 10 goals in a whole season, he's all 10. Brother, he put you over at eight. Put you over at eight. How much are you on Another Aslani kit. No. Bro, for <laughs> a Leicester Aslani kit now. Brother, we're going to have a full roll of Aslani kits. <laughs> okay. This is ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> Get the buying, Barbar. Get the buying, bro. Send me your credit I, card number. I think that's good. Vardy is still somewhat class. I think he's going to be the leader for that team. It's just going to be very, very difficult. We've seen it in the past two, three seasons. Teams that go up in the Premier League do not have the quality to stay up. So, Firms, where do, where do you have them? Because I'm saying 16th, which is like, not bad, which is very confident in my end. And I got 15th. Oh, that's, yeah, even more confident. I think that's really high. No. That is really high for a team that just got into the Premier League. There's a lot of stinky teams. I like, the, I like Steve Cooper, though. I think he's a decent manager. I just, he's... Is he uh, Welsh? No. I, I don't know if he's Welsh. I was about to say Welsh again, but yeah. I made that mistake. He's not Welsh, but he was the ex-Nottingham uh, Forest manager. Yeah. And when what happened there? Good. When they were good. Exactly. Lester, we are so happy you're back in the Premier League, but unfortunately, some of us don't see you staying for long. The next team up, though, is arguably the biggest title contender against Man City. 
It is Arsenal. Arteta's men have gotten stronger with each passing season. With a solid addition in Calafiori, do Arsenal finally have enough to take the Premier League crown? I've never been more excited to go into a season than this season. I mean, last season, you, you were saying the same exact thing. But now I've had more excitement than last season. So. What, is, what is it going to be? Zero trophies again? There's more excitement. You're getting edged. No, no, I'm going to tell you guys exactly what the expectations are. A trophy and not no community shield, but we ain't even in that. You said this last season also, but yeah, okay, let's go. No, no, I did not say that. So don't put the clip. If, this, if it exists, <laughs> don't put it in. <laughs> We go, we go, we're going to scrub through it later. There needs to be an FA Cup. There needs to be going deep in the Champions League. There needs to be something. Or else this project, I'm going to start having questions. But we reinforced. Arteta got his signings. I I, I don't see... like I, I, I see the argument that if you don't get a trophy, it could be seen as a disappointment. Depends which trophies, in my opinion. But when you have a team like Manchester City in the league, like, you can't really say, yeah, throw out the whole project. That's why I didn't say the game. Premier League. That's why I didn't say the Premier League, because as long as Man City is there, you're going versus, you're going versus like a, a, a cornerstone of a whole generation in the Premier League. But Arteta's getting back just as much as Pep. So arguably more. Arguably more. So in this case, like I'm expecting a little bit of a toe to toe at least. I, listen, I think everyone got a little too hyped over the Calafiori signing. Wait, I don't think you say toe to toe as if we didn't toe to toe them for the last two seasons. Well, the, maybe the first season not as much, but second season Which, yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Last season yes. Two seasons ago we were in. We are the winners of the Premier League for how long of the season? Yeah, we but we're no one, one took you serious, bro. And yeah, it was more just like an inevitability mm -hmm. kind of thing. What's no, going just on? Vibe, just what's vibe. going on in the striker position? Because Havertz. Is that really a contender against Man City? Is he going to score those goals? Yeah, bro, he's close nine, bro. Injected straight look, into yeah, my veins. Look, I'll break the ice. I have them second. Look, I was debating... I was debating third, to be honest. Debating third. No I way. Was, no. I was debating third. But I'll be nice. I'll put them second. Last year for me was Arsenal working at full potential and Man City working at like 50% potential. And you guys still lost. So for me, I really don't think that... Look, Calafiori's a nice signing. I'll admit Calafiori's a S -tier. nice signing. S tier. He will push you and give you an extra three, four, five points in a season, let's say. That's but, all we need. Yeah, but I still don't think that you... Last year, you had Bukayo Saka. You're, you guys are using Bukayo Saka like a rag that's been used like 20,000 times and yield reliable. But bro, at one point, he's going to break. Yeah, but it, Let the brother I, rest. when you're the best player on the team... It, it, Who's your backup right winger? Exactly, bro. Reese Nelson. You guys are cooked. One injury, you're cooked. Your no, entire season I, yeah, is cooked. Look, I look at the that. midfield. The mid, like they have depth there. They just got Marino. Like they're building a nice. They team. haven't bought Marino yet, and it's not. It's really, happening. It's okay. happening. It's gonna happen. It's happening. You live in your hypothetical Anyways, world, bro. If Man City continues to win the Prem, like I'm just gonna put Arsenal first because listen, Man, you. Man City cannot be winning again. I, like I, 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 I like the hope. I, I really like the whole... You like enough to put them first? No. I, uh, this is a straight second. I'm sorry. This straight is a second. three-peat of second, uh, unfortunately. I, Arsenal, they have the tools. They, they If City was not in this Premier League... I have no problem putting them first. It's, it's, but City, it's it's so like calculated like a machine. Like You have no doubt. You're, I don't think people are even hyped about City because they just automatically put them first it's only downhill for city but is is that going to be a problem in the storyline like every year people are expecting man city to win it's, there's going to be a downfall I, might be I, this year when pep leaves yeah but pep's not leaving this season i the pep if pep is in manchester city's team they are automatic contenders like lowest two and that's a disappointment Bro, the, just the, off the fact that we're able to compete with city in this era with one of like we used to argue spare point is what you're spare trophies is what you're telling Man City. Bro, Can you drop just a crumb, please? Were we not Give me arguing, Carabao. Were we not arguing that two seasons ago that was the best, that was the best uh, City team we've ever seen? Brother, when you look one of the back best at Premier it, League when teams you look we've ever back seen, at it right now, if Arteta were to leave today, all he has is an FA Cup trophy. Eric Ten Hag has won more at Manchester United. Don't bring than in Arteta. Arteta has won at Manchester United. Don't worry, we'll right get now, to you right. later. Anyway, I'm saying Arsenal first, and I've been, I've never been more confident than that before. One Bukayo Saka injury, and uh, you will be seeing Arsenal in Kazakhstan next season. But uh, that's okay. Next, uh, Millie, what's the next team? It looks like a split decision on Arsenal. Pala and Firms think they're going to win the Premier League. Me and Varvar think they will end up second. The next team, though, I think we could all agree may have issues this season. It is Chelsea. New Chelsea ownership have spent the money, but the results have not been seen on the pitch. Enzo Maresca will have a tough job to bring Chelsea back to glory. But where will they finish this season? I will see myself out with this one. I have them 10th place. That Bro, what? Like, 
I, it's Look not at crazy team, to say. Bro. Come back, you bro. It ain't crazy to say. It's, it is yeah, crazy it's to not, say. No. You guys are judging it off of preseason. That does not matter because they're, they're testing players. They're, they're finding out testing the right players. They're, versus Wrexham, that was like... There was six. There was five, six starters in that lineup. It doesn't matter. It's not a full team. Pumped 4-1 by Man City C team. Uh, you got pumped 4-1 <laughs> as well by Man City. When did we get pumped 4-1 by Man Just City? Just look at one of the games. <laughs> there has to be one game. <laughs> be one game that was I think probably. you won it. Not against Man City C team, though. Yeah, this is a preseason game. and James and McAtee was playing, my brother. Enzo Maresca is not having a good start to life at Chelsea. I'll tell you that. 4-1 right against now. Celtic. It's it's unfortunate. Is this a man management issue or is this a no? It's a player lack issue. of quality issue. Player it's, lack of lack of quality. The players are quality. The players are quality, but you can't bring in forty players and expect to to find their places like that. Like, how is a right winger supposed to feel important in a team like that? Y your confidence goes down and you start playing bad. But Pochettino Chelsea has good team. Finally, started. Pochettino was ass, bro. He no. finally saw right. Did you see the message that Cole Palmer uh, posted after after he left? Oh, yeah, that was that was a man. Ma yeah, that's what I'm saying. Man management wise, he was the only he was the perfect fit for finding what works where, getting guys like Mudrik motivated. Even though Mudrik will never be actually good. I, I just think that the Pochettino near the end of the season finally had Chelsea kind of clicking. Like you were kind of starting to see like a set eleven, a couple changes here and there, but it was the same type of system, same type of identity, which is Chelsea have not seen that in at least three seasons. And Pochettino, and, then they ship and Pochettino's Gone. known to be better in the second, third, fourth season. Mm. But they don't know that because they just got into the sport, what, two well, seasons? PSG, oh. What season was it at PSG where he had his most success? Uh, uh, PSG, I, he flopped, I, by I'm not the sure, first. But, but flopped. Spurs players spoke about how when they first came in, Pochettino raised those fitness levels insanely high and at the end of the first season because they were always doing fitness training. And how many trophies did he win? Zero. That's brother, CL final for Tottenham is nothing to sniff. And he lost it. Cap. But what I'm saying is Chelsea had had injuries in the past. And listen, just like Manchester United had injuries, Chelsea had just as many. But no, I, they didn't. I can't yes, see, they did. I cannot no, they see didn't. injuries as an excuse when your team is 40 freaking players. It's absolutely ridiculous. And you've spent over 30, 40 mil on each one of them. You should not have depth problems. This is this is a sixth place team. Actually, I have them seventh because I put Newcastle sixth. But listen, they're in Conference League, so they're gonna they're gonna be traveling a lot. Yeah, to, and in to, very uh, far places Croatia as well. And uh, Kazakhstan. They're, they're yeah, yes, Kyrgyzstan. exactly. So FC, that's that's gonna take an impact on their team. But this is a good team. I'm saying ninth. I, th I think that's respectable. I have them eight. Uh, I, this is the, and they're my flops. Guys, okay, okay, no, they're bro. my flops of the season. They're my flops. Yeah. Of the bro, season. you heavy, guys, heavy flops. Heavy when flops. you have. My player of the season, Cole Palmer, you can't be a flop of the season. You bro. really think Cole Palmer is going to be able to replicate what he did last season? Yes. He'll be up there. No, The guy's quality. I, at first, I thought flop of the season was for player, and I had Cole Palmer as my That's flop of the season. Stupid. That That's stupid. Because I, stupid. brother, he put how many? He did 30 plus goals and assists last season. But I can see, I can see 20 this season. That's what and I And that's amazing for someone like that. Yeah. Player of the season. Shit. And I have to say, once again, for the Chelsea rebuild, Todd Bailey, go yourself yeah Barbara is clearly <laughs> holding some uh, minus 250 mil card he gave me Varvar unfortunately is feeling from that last Chelsea rebuild but the next team up Varvar get ready for the yap sesh it is Manchester United a roller coaster of a season has many wondering if Manchester United have what it takes to compete but marquee additions like Lenny Euro show that they mean business where do you have them placed Damn, Chelsea, Manchester United, back to back. Ooh -wee. Ooh -wee. <laughs> so I'm gonna start this this lengthy discussion, just saying Manchester United are my flops of the season. But you can you guys can start your discourse. Yeah, you're already rebuttal. starting off with some absolute heinous. I, I just I want to make you angry. Okay. I'm trying to make you angry here. Now, our ceiling for this season, in my opinion, is second. Okay, that's the ceiling. Yeah, I think ceiling. I could ceiling. see us doing ceiling? better than yeah, Arsenal. You, you ceiling, brother, you, you in a drop there, top, bro. You got, I, I you're in a drop top. Our Damn. ceiling is second, okay? I like what we're doing in the transfer market. I have us third, okay? I have us third. I think we could. Third? Yeah. yeah. For what? I, what have you done? I, I, listen. Person. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to go that crazy uh, like last season. Oh, not a hog rider situation Check. again. This may be a hog rider situation, brother. Oh, I, no, I have them. I have them third. Oh, I think Oh my the god, <laughs> chill, bro. What I, is this? I think the fact that they've kept Ten Hog is a plus because Agreed. I had Liverpool fourth on a slot 
bringing in a new manager, changing philosophy is way more detrimental than selling a player and bringing in new players. Millie. Sometimes doing nothing is better than doing something. And I th listen, Like Chelsea, they were better off doing nothing this summer. Are we just going to act like Man United didn't spend half the summer trying to replace Ten Hag? But the, fa the, the core of Man United is much more solid than, let's say, last season. The only reason why I'm putting Manchester United sixth place is I've... because, by the way, Van Nistelrooy is going to be managing that team by the Very sixth good. week. By the sixth week, he's going to be managing that team. But... I'm gonna say Manchester United, I like the build. I like what Ineos has begun starting, but I, I, like I said, I don't think they found the manager fit for the position. That's the only reason why Ten Hag is still there. I, I don't think so. I think Ten Hag is, you, you try to keep it, steady the ship as much as possible. If Ineos, I think after a season or so, sees that Ten Hag is not improving the team, then I think there's an argument, okay, you find another replacement. But I think the options that were available, one, were not feasible, and two, weren't that good. Ten Hag at Ajax puts Arne Slot at Feyenoord to shame. He puts also Maresca at Leicester to shame. All these care. managers that you're hyping up, oh my god, they're these so These are cool. hypotheticals. They're so cool! Well, Ten Hag destroys them. Bro, brother tweaking. Ah, I'm yeah. geeking, bro. <laughs> Let Just it, put the fries in the bag. Literally, just put the fries <laughs> in the bag. I heard our number 11 trio, bro. <laughs> Put the fries in the bag, bro. <laughs> in all seriousness, though, for young player, um, I have Millie, bro. I have Millie, Kobe Millie, Mainu. Millie, I have Millie time to switch. My I, young player. Millie, I have another Man United player. I have Ahmad Diallo as my young player. I, I think that's more of a stretch, in my opinion. I don't I think, think it is. Minutes yeah. wise, I don't see him getting as much as, let's say, a Kobe Mainu. Kobe Mainu has solidified himself as a United starter. Millie, you're using two hands, bro. No, this Listen, ain't two hands. It's bro, not two crazy hands, to say bro. because. He's good, 18 years old, and he's starting for. Manchester United and it's England, really bro. Crazy. Forget the technical ability for the si for a second. The PR of Manchester United is just too good for this guy to know when young players. It's like that Real Madrid season. PR. It's it's in second, prem, it second to Real Madrid and Barca. In the Prem, it is. Yeah. Because this guy, all he needed was one season to but, just do a couple of flicks and, oh my God, he's the next coming of uh, Paul Scholes. Okay, let's calm down. <laughs> That's but, literally you, word for word. He might be better. <laughs> uh, the the um. The PR also goes both ways. If he starts the season like shit, yeah. people are going to over-exaggerate how shit he's been. But yeah, I think all eyes are on him because yeah. they, they have him as a potential like favorite for young player of the season. But the minutes, the play, the, the fact like if United finish strong, I don't see another player contending for young player of the season. Rashford, well, Rashford player of the season? Rashford player of the young season. Young player is of the season? Nuts. Rashford, that is crazy. Rashford player of the season no bro no You're nuts no first of all united I, player I to win put, young I player and right player now, i see him getting back to that but around that barcelona game form where he was the best player in the world i'm going for rashford player this best season. player in the world bro, and rashford what? in the same we're no longer talking about sense. eras we're no longer talking about eras the we're bar is so low we're talking about games. singular we're games. rejuvenating form oh my Which, God. there it is Add it to the count. Bro, put him on a t-shirt, bro. Rejuvenating, uh, rejuvenating the form. The form. There's a lot of players you gotta rejuvenate in that team. Yeah. Listen, they're gonna start. They're gonna start actually ass because of all the injuries, Lenny Yoro and stuff. But I got them third. So see, uh, you you have them comfortably making. You have them effort. third also. So why were you freaking out? I wasn't freaking out. Okay, good. Bro, third. You guys actually think they're gonna finish? Bro, Man United. I think everyone was waiting for that Manchester United talk, but the next team up is Crystal Palace. Let's see how they do without a key player, Michael Olise. A heavy loss in Michael Olise doesn't overshadow a very strong Crystal Palace squad. The question is, will they do better or worse than their previous top 10 finish? As of recording, there's still some, uh, there's still some things unsaid. Is Gay leaving? Is Eze getting bought? Because if both those players leave with the departure of Olise, we're looking at what? What's left of the team? I mean, I, I rate... I heavily rate Crystal Palace and I heavily rate their manager, Oliver Glasner. I have them seventh. I think they're... Seven. Yeah, that, is I, that assuming that they keep most oh of their God. players, Varvar? Uh, I, I'm assuming they're going to keep crazy. Eze, Gehi. Gehi's a bit more eh, but they ended up buying uh, Riyad from uh, Real Betis, who was a Barcelona wonder kid before that. I think he's going to end up being really good. Wand of a left foot. You still have Anderson. You still kept most of your good players. I mean, they and they built on that foundation. I, I think they're going to be very good this season. And last season, they ended as one of the best teams in the Premier League towards yes. the end of the season. It's just tough to give them a straight number, like place where they're going to be with so I'll, I'll give you one. I'll give you one, 11th. I, I have them 10th. That's fine. I have them enough quality to make it in the top half, but they have the ability to overperform, which I think they did near the end of the season.
So last from previous season. You, you, I saw you, I saw you snap your fingers. You have also have. I got nine? tenth as well. I have an eleventh, tenth. I mean, I'm, I'm saying eleventh with the prediction that Gay or Eze is leaving. Mm -hmm. And if it's Eze, I think Eze might be more dropping a, a couple, big, a bigger of a loss than Gay. Although, do English fans think Gay was one of the players of the tournament? For yeah, Gay is an amazing center back. Yeah, I think that's. I wouldn't say his break. Like it wasn't a breakout because I think everyone knew his quality, but it was. Uh, Eye-opening to I mean, see what type of level he is. He is a world. He's the only center. one on that English team that can knock on the door of the team of the tournament. Anybody else was just somehow Walker made it to the team of the tournament, but yeah, no, he was the worst right back in the entire yeah, tournament. Understand. Then he I made the team of the tournament. Kind of That's that Man City. Uh, <clears throat> yep, Man City goal. Ridiculous. They said just get someone in there. Anyone, <laughs> just get anyone in there. Perfect. And Firms had him ten. Your your prediction. Get Holland in there. <laughs> get Holland in there. I didn't even play, but just get, get him. The in there. <laughs> we can't put Holland in the team of the tournament. <laughs> yeah, pump this up. So there is where we have Crystal Palace this season. The next team up is a newcomer, Ipswich Town. One of the oldest teams in England, Ipswich have made their return back to the top flight. Will we see a miracle or will we see a drop back to the championship? The hipsters already have their scouting reports out. Yeah, I've seen this guy. In, I am one of those. The, the guy, McKenna is a very good coach. He has very clear ideologies, but... This is like, this is reminiscent of a company to Burnley situation. Oh boy. Where you join the Prem and you can't actually play how you want to play. Oh. I got them brothers. I got them 19th. I just, they don't have the quality to play what they were playing in the championship. Brother, that's just uninformed. That's uninformed? Just uninformed, mis misinformation. I have them 15th. I think- You're 15th. absolutely I think deluded. What you You're from not. Kieran McKenna, Kieran McKenna, you see, you just started following Ipswich because it got trendy. It got hip yeah. to follow oh, okay. Ipswich. And when were you Since following? Kieran I'm McKenna sure you following left Manchester United game. to join Ipswich, I've been following it. And, and what has what that told you? that Kieran McKenna can play many different ways. He's not company, oh. he does not stick to one style of play. Kieran McKenna, when he was here under Ole, Ole at Manchester United was a more like pragmatic style of play. He could play that way, he can play that hipster way also. I, I, I love the confidence, Varvara. That's uh, that's something I don't think I was expecting to hear at all today. This is a dead last situation. I agree. No. Yes, this I is, agree. This, I, I understand the confidence in their system, in their manager, in, everything around them it's positive but it's not enough when you have the quality of teams that are in the premier league imagine an ipswich versus man city you could you could play a low block uh, yeah. counter attacking but Direct there's football, there's, but nine, there's 18 other game teams that they play in the okay. premier league not just man city i agree man city they'll get destroyed this is a lead situation except leeds actually have aura <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Last year, yeah. last year we said luton would finish dead last also where did they end up they finished 18th but they almost made it out they were yeah, relegated. They, they showed fight. They showed. Uh, I'm the, sure Ipswich will show fight, but what, how much fight can you show? There. Where did you put them from? 19th. <laughs> Ipswich. Remember this. When you guys are like the surprise team of the season, yeah. and they, these guys tried to say we all knew Ipswich was going to be decent. Ipswich. Send Varvar to a game in Ipswich. <laughs> I love Ipswich. Ipswich. It looks like you have a new fan on box to box. Let's see if Varvar is correct this season. The next team is Everton. The Toffees will be looking to have a better season than last. Without their points deduction, Everton would have been 12th in the league. A fine finish for a club that was threatening relegation. However, can they find that form this season in the Premier League? Boys, this is important. This is important. Does anyone have them going down? Of course not. A this team that's historically never been dropped? I don't think it happens this season, boss. I don't think it happens this season either. Are you saying what the time has come? What if I told you the time has come? No. no. Sean Dyche, no. Sean Dyche, you have... You have helped Everton stay afloat and be the last of the two remaining teams, other than Arsenal, by the way, to stay never getting relegated. But I think this is the season with the departures of Onana. Branthwaite seems like he's staying, but not enough. You think? It's not enough. It's not enough. I, is this a 17th situation? Like they like deadline? Last day of and the is Premier this, League. And uh, is this like an FFP minus 12 point deduction? No. That's why they're 17th? No, this is straight, is straight 17th. Take straight out relegation. the point deduction, bro. No, Last 12. season, they were 12th. I, I, I have them 13th this season, to be honest. I, I have them 13th. I got them 12th again. I, I think that's the area they're going to be because Sean Dyche, he is just such a vet in the Premier League. Like, you know he's going to get those points away from the big teams, a couple of ties here and there. They, they have a couple of the pieces. You have a solid defense. I feel like that Onana transfer is a very, very big piece that you're missing. And 
can Calvert Lewin really support? Oh, he might be out the door. Uh, that's the thing. He might like, be out the door. Who's who are your striker options? I think it, I'm seeing a lot of maybe like one nothing wins or losses, and then like zero zero. Well, they signed Beto from uh, Udinese. You guys should know him. He is not yeah, good. Bro. Brother was not good. At he, he's a he's a target man. No, that's yeah, how he is. But, but that's I don't how think they play. he knows how to play with his feet. But unfortunately, that's not enough in the Premier League. You need to have players that have different styles. Well, no, he fits back. the style. Sean Dyche doesn't need a guy that can that is hybrid. He needs a guy that can just break break a tackle and just run, start running. The problem yeah. him, Beto and Calvert Lewin are very like inconsistent strikers. You need someone who like will put in a goal at I least agree. every a couple games. You know They're what I mean? They're not consistent at all. Those types of strikers. They're gonna have off to off season, like off times, off games. I have them 15th. I think they'll digress a bit from last season, but they won't necessarily be threatened by relegation. It'll just be a, a below average season. Listen, there's always stories in the Premier League. Every season we get like a we get like an either a very positive story or a very negative story. And I'm I'm committing to the Everton relegation story, this one. So Everton for the most part, you'll be staying in the Premier League. The next team up are the current title holders, fellas. It is Manchester City. The current title holders seem to be stronger than ever, with no signs of slowing down. Anything less than a Premier League title can be seen as a disappointment. So, will they get the five, Pete? Interesting. Ranking-wise, under Arsenal, I'm putting them number two. But that's just because, you know. I have them one, obviously. There's not really much to say about Man City. They didn't do that many transfers. I think this season you could look out for players like Oscar Bob and stuff like that, but... Baller. The issue with Oscar Bob is I see him similar to a Cole Palmer situation at Man City. The brother's already, what, 22, 23? Gets shipped out for 50 mil? I, wouldn't, I don't know, 50 mil, but... Uh, they just signed Savinho to play right wing. They have Doku who can play right wing. Bernardo Silva can play wing. Like, how much game time is Bob really going to get? But how do you, should. how do you see a team upgrading that's already so st like stacked in a sense? It's so even. Perfect. It's perfect. It's there's, perfect. There's no, you can't look at a position and say, yeah, we need a new starter. Kyle Walker at right back, maybe you can say that, he's starting to there. age a bit. I think Ederson. He's I on think, the way out. Uh, yeah, but I think he could also be upgraded. I think. Uh, oh, for sure. But upgraded to what? They really, the, the amount of options that are available that are better are like you could count them on your on a one hand pretty much. It's it's not like there's like a, a whole basket that they could pick from. It's, well, that's what it is when you're going for the top. Yeah, of course. But I just don't think they need to, one, improve in a sense. I think they have enough already as it is to five peat. Like this is a crazy work. This is unprecedented in the Premier League, honestly. I, I got them second just because I don't want to see them first. Like I, I you're, get uh, the manifesting. I'm manifesting it because I get the feeling that they will be first, but I don't like. There's no way they go back to back to back again, bro. Listen, even Thanos. How good bro, are these guys? Thanos had all the Thanos had all the stones, and he still got. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, Alan, this preseason this prison, pre -season looks back. Not against like, Milan. Like, not against Milan. Like physically <laughs> dominant. Did Gaza. he ever leave? I think last season... I think he scored like 28 goals. La yeah, <laughs> last season. But look, Haaland obviously at 50% at is still probably the best striker in the Premier League. I have him as my top scorer. I had him next to Rashford as my player of the season. Those were the two players that I'm debating because Haaland this preseason has looked levels, like levels. I also got Haaland as my top scorer. I think that's inevitable. I, I think obviously I want it to be different. That's why I picked Isaac. But I do see like a Rodri winning player of the season. Brother <laughs> Premier League. I know this it's not is crazy something to that say, he, bro. Has, Come on. he has won in the past. Varvara it is crazy has, to say, bro. Has How? denied the fact that he should have won. Like, last time he won, you said that that was like a rinky-dink Be trophy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not I like, he's not a Premier League player. Millie, he's a, a very good Premier I, I League player. Think, watch, watch. Millie, where do you think Rodri ranked in the... No, no, I'm just asking. Yeah. Where do you think? Where do you think he ranked in the, uh, in the nominees of last season's uh, Premier League? Top five. Yeah, you know he wasn't nominated? That's unfortunate. That's the idea of Rodri. Everybody has, it's the same like Jorginho had in the past. People will watch guys like this and successful teams and just say, you know what? The media is pinning the success on this midfielder, but I don't actually Brother, know how important. Brother, second in Ballon d'Or right now. I, I he, honestly think- That's because of his zero. That shows he's underrated, people, if anything. A lot of people have been saying Kevin De Bruyne is digressing. Who's gonna take on the, those responsibilities that let's say De Bruyne is kind of- Brother, I, do not, I don't see Kevin De Bruyne digressing that much. But people like, are talking about it. So why not see Rodri as that new main piece because Man he's not. Holland is. Holland is the producer, sure. Like he's he's putting in the goals, but Rodri is the one is the metronome. Easily. Our predictions are starting to shape up. The next team up is Wolves. Let's talk about him. Gary O'Neill's men have done well in recent years to stay mid-table in the Premier League. Will they overachieve, or will they find themselves dropped to the Championship? 
Wolves, let's make this quick. Yeah. Brother, their summer transfer window was ass. Um, Celta Vigo, they bought the Celta Vigo brother for 30 million. I don't even know his name. <laughs> let's make this quick. Uh, 17th, you you barely 17th. survived. 17th? Yeah, 17th, oh. bro. Yeah, this uh, bro, just... brother, 18th. 18th? What? You, what? what? Wolves, Wolves definition of this Premier League season is, brother, just put the fries in the bag. Bro, didn't we have this Ain't conversation nobody trying to watch season? Wolves. We had the conversation last season. And, and what happened? they were garbage. And what happened? They and garbage. they outperformed no. their XG by a generational number. Uh, they also got destroyed by VAR last season. Like. Aren't they the only team that went against VAR? Out of all 20 teams, yeah. they were the only ones that voted against VAR. Because they're crybabies. No, bro, they actually got destroyed by VAR. It, bro. Was, it was bad. Bro. Anyway, I like Gary O'Neill. I think he's been a good manager for them. But aside from that... I should put the fries in. They're, the they're a consistent team. They have good forwards. Pedro Neto's still there, which is good. Oh, that'll get you somewhere, bro. bro. He do, he's a brother. Excellent player. Really, he would actually be one of the best players in Serie His ACL is like pulled pork. Like, it's hanging by a thread. This brother's done. First month of the season. That's the third time I hear it in this video. God damn. Yeah. Pulled pork, bro. You hungry? Yeah, he's <laughs> brother's hungry. I'm definitely, yeah, we're definitely hungry. I got them 14th. 14th? I have them 12th. That's 12th? way too high. Bro. That's way too high. Who do you have 12th? Sammy, tell me who you have 12th. Fulham. Fulham. Fulham's clear. Fulham? Fulham? Switch Fulham, Fulham and Wolves in no. your predictions. No. Yes. Wolves, um, it's time to, it's I don't time know, to, I was trying to make an animal joke, but there's no time to, to go hunting. Made. Yeah, you're you're the hunted. <laughs> you're no longer the, the predator apex. becomes you're the, no pre longer the prey. The apex. Okay, let's, let's just end the video here. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like the idea is split on Wolves. Up next is another newcomer. It is Southampton. Finally back in the Premier League, Southampton are a shell of their former selves. Will they stay in the Premier League or will they suffer from relegation? Southampton. Yeah. Now, anybody got anything anybody to, got say? to say? You guys might call me crazy. You're crazy. I, I have them even fifth. Need. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They're last. You, you see how there was no reaction to that? <laughs> my I we don't, went like that. don't actually take you serious. Bro, my heart did not. Like, the heart just kept beating <laughs> at the same beat. pace. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, they signed the Sugawara from. Uh, that'll get you somewhere. Yeah, boss. that'll get you to <laughs> that'll last you place. Somewhere. That'll get you to last place. I, I have them honestly. I'm a bit more positive on them because I do think that they may have slightly enough. I have them 17th, just scraping 17th. by. I have them 17th oh. too, scraping by. They stay in the prem. They stay in the prem. Me too. No, that's crazy. I got them 20th. I do not see what's going on in Southampton. They have a better shot of staying up than Ipswich. When they got relegated, they were one of the worst Prem teams I've ever watched. And uh, I have not seen that much difference from those teams. I mean, you brought in a couple Man City loans. You bought Flynn Downs from West Ham. I, it's it's a lot of just buying the players that got you here. And I don't think that they were that good. It's not a step team. up. Yeah, it's uh, for me, it's the last. We are now on to the final team. It is Tottenham Hotspur. Ange's first season at the helm showed mixed but promising results, but they will need to rely even more on Huming Sun to carry them. Will they get a CL spot? This is another case of it's just can they make progress with what they have already built? Because I like the management, I like the direction the club's going to, but I think fifth is kind of their resting place for me. I got them fourth. It's I, just very young and inexperienced. Very. I agree. And I don't, I don't, I don't think Ange is gonna have a great sophomore season. I don't think his second season won't be that great. I think there's a lot of hope that Tottenham will take the next step. But again, they don't have necessarily the players that you could look at, like a, a Bentancur. You could look at a Romero, Huming Son. It's kind of flared out towards the end of the year, and that might lead into next season. I, I think it'll be much more like it won't be like highs and lows. Yeah. It may just be something a bit more. That's steady. what they need. That consistency. Listen, they went into last season. We didn't know that Vicario was going to be so good. We didn't know that Van de Ven was, well, I mean, injured, but we didn't know that Van de Ven was going to be so good. We didn't know Madison was going to turn out to be an okay, insane please, player. Please, Ooh, please stop. Stop. Madison has been shit. No, no but Madison's first beginning of the season. two months. Madison's he was, beginning of the season. Uh, this is getting me mad. He's shit, my brother. Bro, bro, bro. We're gonna, just wait. This just season, wait. he has the opportunity to be Tottenham's best player. He's doing his best James Rodriguez at Everton impression. The brother did very it's good his first crazy, month, bro. and then the rest of the year, he was dying. Absolutely dog shit. They reek. Well, that's why they're getting depth. Bro, if a, a lot of those players stay fit, like uh, Van de Ven and even Udogi, their core is really good. Sure, I forgot Udogi was injured last season. 100%. I could see the potential. I Listen, I have them fifth. I have them like, being like a very solid Premier League team. We'll get the results against smaller teams, but it's it's those middle table big teams that I feel they will struggle because the quality is not all there. This is an insanely high risk brand of football. That's why you you can't you give yourself the room to disappoint. But and why? Finish that's fifth, why six, they'll seven, be eight. fifth because the injuries. You mentioned the injuries, but why do you use the 
oh, it'll be better this season for a team like Manchester United, but it because won't be better it, for uh, Spurs. Because Spurs got not many injuries. They got a couple long injuries. They got injuries, a lot though. of injuries. Yes, but Man United, you're looking at 60 different cases of injury. You're not talking the same I want to say Spurs was the second most injured team in the Premier League. They played season. one game a week last season in the Premier League too. So you, you, you're you comparing apples and you guys play. And how many did you guys play? Three games a, three, three games a week. And there you have it. These are our official predictions for the upcoming Premier League season. Some crazy shouts, but I think pretty much these were pretty reasonable fellas. I was really not biased this season, if you ask me. Oh, like this, this year I was good. I'll give, uh, like this year was good. We're gonna see how these Premier League predictions shape up, but if you wanna see our predictions for the other top five leagues, make sure to check out our Patreon. We're gonna have it posted there.